Do you want to make a fast start in a new language? Maybe you're like me, you have no patience. And I feel like the idea of delayed gratification is one of the stupidest ideas in the world. I'm not going to wait for anything. I just, I'm just not built that way. I met my wife uh, three weeks before we were engaged. That's how my brain works. And maybe when you're tackling a new language, you want to make progress quickly. You want to feel like you're you're, you're getting there, that you're, you, you know, you're not all the way there, but you're making progress and you can actually use this language just as quickly and early as you can. They say that the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, but the truth is that a journey that goes absolutely nowhere also starts with a single step. So I want to tell you how to make a fast start in your new language so that every step actually counts, so that you get a, a quick payoff, you get quickly involved in your new language, and that you can use it as soon as possible. Are you interested in learning quickly? Uh, I hope you have the same lack of patience that I do because I think we'll connect really well uh, if that's true. Uh, I had a student named Mike and uh, Mike was an engineer or Mike is an engineer and he works in mining and uh, part of his job involved moving to uh, Chile and he had to learn the language really quickly. Uh, he already spoke uh, another language but uh, he needed to get Spanish uh, really quickly. And he did a fantastic, fantastic job of uh, getting started. So let's talk about how you can do that as quickly as possible. Uh, the first thing that I think you should do is learn some useful phrases. Learn some basic survival language in your target language. You can do this with a, a beginner's textbook, like uh, one of the Teach Yourself books. Teach Yourself even has a, a series called um, uh, getting started in Russian, getting started in French, getting started in Spanish. That, that's great. But even a phrase book, memorize some basic phrases. Hello, goodbye, good afternoon, thank you. Do you speak my target language? I'm sorry, I don't understand. How do you say this in your language? That kind of stuff. Memorize these things. You don't have to understand the grammar. You don't have to have a big vocabulary. You just want to get something going, something coming out of your mouth and the ability to understand what you're probably going to hear. If you say thank you, what are they likely to respond with? You can learn that much and just plain memorize it. You're not learning anything much about how the language function, functions yet. Uh, you can do that later. You can get yourself a, a, good, a good textbook and figure out you know, how the language is, is structured. Listen to the language. You want to hear it uh, on the radio or on YouTube or, or whatever. Listen to it, even if it's way beyond your level. It's cool if you can find something roughly at your level, that's great, but that's not always true. Just find something and get your ears used to the sound and the rhythm of your language because that will really help you with your accent. If you know how, it's, how it sounds when it's spoken at a normal speed, you'll be able to do that one day. It's, it, it really helps you, um, especially if you're not a kid. Uh, learn the writing system of your target language if you can. So most languages, that's not a difficult thing. People sometimes get uh, freaked out by learning the Russian alphabet. There's nothing to it. You can learn it easily in a day. It's uh, not hard. You may practice a little bit. If you're learning Chinese or Japanese especially or Arabic, it's a much bigger challenge. But f for most languages, learn how it works because that enables you to use dictionaries and textbooks. And uh, if you meet somebody and they say, here's the word for that, they can write it out for you and you'll be able to understand it. So learn the writing system. Uh, get yourself a beginner's textbook, as I said. There's there's lots of them available. Um, and just just plug along, start off slowly. You don't have to work your way through the through the teach yourself Spanish book in you know a few weeks or something. Take your time. Just just plug away and, and uh, enjoy the process of learning it. Uh, don't steal stuff. Don't pirate stuff uh, online. That's, that's stupid. It's rude. It's illegal. It's disrespectful and it's completely unnecessary. You can get a book for, you can get a book or two in your target language, even if it's in a secondhand store that, that'll do your job and then you keep your conscience clear and you'll, you'll be clean. So don't, don't be a thief. Uh, f get yourself a dictionary or, um, or uh, get a dictionary. I, I use all my dictionaries now on my iPhone. 
Uh, so, you know, dictionaries on your smartphone are great because you usually have your phone with you all the time. And you see something and you say, oh, wow, I just saw a zebra walking down the street. What's the word for zebra in my target language? If you've got a paper dictionary, it's way slower and you're looking through and looking through. Uh, don't be cheap when you buy a dictionary. Get the biggest dictionary that's available, the biggest one you can afford, because you'll find that the little ones, the cheap dictionaries, don't have enough words. They usually don't have modern vocabulary in them. They usually don't have anything technical in them. Uh, and, they, and you can't sort things out. Like if you get to the word trunk and you want to know, are we talking about the trunk of a tree, the trunk of a car, a trunk that you store things in? And you can't tell, but in a good dictionary you can. So you'll be really happy. If you spend good money on your dictionary, that's the best place to spend your money spend your money. You don't need to spend a lot of money on other things, but spend your money on a dictionary. Um, you know, it might not be, you know, some dictionaries are difficult. If you're learning a, a less commonly studied language, it might be a little harder to find a, a really useful dictionary. Um, uh, look for modern vocabulary, as I said. Make sure that you can find words like computer and internet and mouse and uh, uh, anything technical. Um, you can you want one that you can use online and offline so whether or not you've got an inter internet connection uh, I like to use grammar I know it's trendy right now to say that oh you don't need to learn grammar to learn a new language and it's true you don't need to learn grammar but grammar can really speed up the process especially when you're dealing with a textbook when I tackle a new language it's much much faster for me because I know what the parts of speech are. I know what a noun and a verb and an adverb is. I know what it means if there are declensions or inflections or conjugations. These are all grammatical terms, but they're not hard to understand. And you don't have to be a master of grammar. Just if you know basic terms like noun, verb, adjective, uh, tense, what a verb tense is. If you don't know that, it's, it's definitely harder. That's for sure. A wee bit of grammar will really pay off. If your language is closely related to a language that you already speak, you're going to make quicker progress. But uh, if you are tackling a language that's distantly related to your own language uh, or completely unrelated to, to your own language, you can still do it. You just take it in smaller bites and uh, you can make progress every day. Look for cognates and connections. A cognate is a word that's very similar between two languages. For example, the word for phone in Spanish is teléfono. There are so many words in Spanish, which I teach a lot. Uh, there are so many words that are recognized by people who sign up for my beginner Spanish classes. And they recognize hundreds, I would say thousands of words because so many are, are the same. Uh, they're very closely related. These are cognates. Uh, you want to know if your language has inflections. Does it have a lot of endings on words? And are you going to have to figure out how those things work. You don't have to memorize tables and all that kind of stuff. There's certainly better ways than doing that. I'll talk about that sometime, especially something called chunking. It works really well for mastering crazy, complex grammar like Russian. Oh, Russian. What a job that's been for me. That's a lot of work. And I keep plugging away. Uh, you want to know if your language is phonetic or not. Some languages are really nicely phonetic. You can figure out how to read them and pronounce them properly early on. Spanish is that way. Um, French is not exactly. Czech is wonderful. Czech is extremely phonetic. Uh, Russian is not so much. You have to learn that certain letters have different sounds in different places and you never know where the stress is going to be in a word. And even in different forms of the same word, the stress moves around where, where the accent is in the word. So you want to know that kind of thing about your target language. Does it have declensions? Does it have conjugations uh, on the verbs? Uh, does it have unique features and challenges? It does, does it have uh, weird things going on? Uh, Punjabi has a couple of tones. It's not a tonal language like Chinese where there's, you know, tones are, are everywhere, but Punjabi has a couple of tones. You want to know that if you're ta tackling Punjabi. It's one of the unique features of Punjabi or retroflex consonants. If you're learning Indian languages, you're going to have to learn what retroflex consonants are. Explore the culture of your target language. If you can connect with the target with the with the culture of your target language, it's so easy to stay motivated because you learn to love people and you make some friends, and that'll keep you going. Um, you can also read books about the country where your target language is spoken. Watch some movies 
that take place in the in in a country where your target language is spoken. All of these things connect you with the people and with the culture uh, of your target language community. Uh, to simply connect with grammatical information in textbooks is really a painful way to get there. You want to have something that grabs your heart, not just your brain. So the culture does that. Uh, find your target language community. There's you, you, it, ideally, you want to be able to try and find some people somewhere near you that speak your target language. It's way harder to learn a language in a community that is nowhere near you and where you're not going to have personal contact with that language. I don't even know why people do that. Why the heck would you learn how to speak Navajo if you're living in Kenya? I don't understand it. I, I would never do that. Uh, I will never learn a language uh, that I don't have contact with the target language culture. And the languages I speak well are the ones where I've had lots of personal contact with people who speak that language. And the languages I speak poorly, I've studied a little bit, but I just haven't had enough contact with the, with the target language community. Uh, look for cultural centers. You, you'll find in many cities an Italian cultural center or a, a Latino community group or something, and you can make connections there. Uh, watch out for people who speak your target language. If you hear somebody with an accent, be brave. And uh, you can say some really polite things. You can say things like, wow, man, if, if I could speak Spanish the way that you speak English, I would be so happy. And you make connections that way. And you compliment people. You ask them, was it hard for you to learn English? And then they tell you. And then they understand what you're going through when you're trying to learn Spanish or Polish or whatever you're trying to learn. Uh, you can find your target language community in churches. Uh, in the city where I live, there's a Ukrainian church very nearby, and they have cultural events. They have uh, big uh, parties where you go and eat Ukrainian food, and and uh, you can connect with music and all kinds of things there. So churches, restaurants are good. If you're learning Chinese, you know, go to a Chinese restaurant, and hopefully they, they speak the kind of Chinese that you want to learn. Uh, we have a a Mexican restaurant town where everybody there working is Mexican. Look for uh, concerts in your target language community where somebody's coming and they sing in your language because the people who speak your target language are all going to go there. You should go too. Keep your eyes and ears open and uh, watch for people all around you. Watch for contact. Make as much contact as you can. This is critical. Make as much contact as you can with your target language early on. You'll make much faster progress that way. So the, the basic principles I want to pass on to you, get going quickly. I don't believe in this idea of wait, well, for me, I don't believe in this idea of waiting a number of months or a year to get around to speaking your target language. Forget it. I would lose interest completely. I'm not interested in connecting with books. I'm not interested in connecting with history or, or you know, geology or anything else. I want to connect with people. And that's the most common thing that people want to do. And so I find a lot of the other other approaches have different goals. And for me, they're completely irrelevant. Uh, but if you want to connect with people, follow, follow the advice that I'm passing on. Click, connect with your target language as much as you can. I hope that helps. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks.